Hey everyone, I'm Budget Nerd, and this is my channel. Switchbot churned out a few more interesting products. No, really. I don't usually showcase or review a brand quite this often on my channel. If you're counting, this would be the third video, but there's a reason for it. I've always thought retrofitting your existing house stuff to make it smart was a good idea. But don't fear, I'm not paid, my thoughts are my own, they have no input in this video, and don't review it before uploading. Their products have just been pretty good, and I just find them interesting. So, let's dive in. Switchbot sent out their brand new Matter-enabled Hub 2 that released yesterday, or April 7th, 2023, if you're watching this at a later date, along with their Blind Tilt Bot, which will retrofit your blinds and let you control them with your phone or favorite smart home device. Each one will set you back 70 big ones, at least at the time of this video. Let's look and see what's in the box while we go over what this new hub has to offer. Strap in. Here is the hub. It's a Matter-enabled hub. What is Matter, you ask? Well, I asked the same thing. It's basically a new language for smart home devices whose aim is to simplify your smart home, making it easier to add and manage devices, with its biggest trick being any Matter-enabled device can be controlled by any platform or ecosystem like Google, Alexa, Siri, and so on. That means if it's Matter-enabled, you don't have to worry whether or not it will support your smart home assistant. It just will, no matter what it is. See what I did there? Also, when at home, Matter also allows you to control your Matter-enabled devices even if you lose your connection to the internet. Yes, most current smart devices require access to the internet to send and process commands. Let's check out what's in the blind tilt box now. Here is the blind tilt unit. It just fastens to your blind rod and a motor spins it to open or close the blinds. Anyway, wrapping up the matter explanation. So it sounds nice, right? And the answer is yes, it does. It does have Google, Apple, and Amazon behind it, so it could take off. But keep in mind, it's pretty new. For now, only supporting simple functions like on-off, lock-unlock, and brighten-dim. There also aren't many Matter devices out there yet, but Matter does have an update coming in Spring 2023. So yes, it will take some time to mature, but it's neat that SwitchBot is jumping into the game with the big boys early on. If there is interest, I could do a dedicated video on Matter and go over it in some more detail. Wrapping up this unboxing, you see there are some measurement tools for the rod and templates to help you install your blind tilt bot, as well as a solar panel with a built-in light sensor. Here is what you get with the blind tilt bot. And here is what you get with the Hub 2. We'll talk more about the Hub 2 in a bit, but right now let's install the Blind Tilt Bot. If you're just interested in the Hub 2, jump to this time. Start by measuring your blind rod. You can remove it like I did to measure it. But to install the shim and gear, you'll want the rod on the blinds. You can use their measuring tool to determine what gear shim thickness you need. My blind rod is large, apparently, which means I use this thinner shim. They are labeled with small, medium, and large, with this sticky thing being for extra large. You want to use their template to help you know where to put stuff. You'll also want to place the bot mount on the left if you can, but if there isn't room, you'll have to place it on the right side like I had to. If you're close to the line that lifts the blinds, you could use this mount instead. I figured out how I would need to mount mine and then just took the blinds down to make filming and installing easier. Remove the stickies from the template and place it on the center of the blind rod 
with the top part of the template up against the bottom of the blind casing. Next, you'll use these legs of the template to show you where the shim and gear should be mounted. Remove the sticky covers and wrap the shim around the rod, then snap the gear over it. Make sure the little latch is secure and there's no play or slippage. Next, grab the mount and place it either here or here. Follow these template lines. I didn't have enough room on the left, so I had to put it on the right side. Remove the template and grab the bot. If you mounted it on the right, remove this top mount clip and flip it around. Then start to slide it up into the main mount until it clicks. Then slide it up enough to line up the gear. Once lined up, close the door on the gear and click it shut. Make sure there is some play and that the rod rotates freely without binding. Calibrate them by teaching the bot the closed and open positions. And congrats, you're done. They also provided a solar panel that has a light sensor on it, so it could automatically open in the morning or stuff like that, and keep your battery charged. I think these things are neat, and while it does look a little silly, they work great. As with all smart home stuff, you can use the app to control the blinds, check their status, and set a schedule. You could also use your favorite smart home assistant, heck, even HomeKit now, thanks to their new Matter-enabled Hub 2. Speaking of Hub 2, its support of Matter is what made me decide to check it out. One pain of smart home devices, especially if you have lots of different brands in your home because you review lots of different brands, is the complexity, and having several different hubs or devices that sort of do the same thing just because they won't talk to each other. Going forward, this may be the only hub I'll need for a long time. The Hub 2 builds on the already neat Mini Hub, adding three more infrared LEDs for transmission and one more for receiving, increasing the range and direction. It has a neat little display on the face that will show the humidity and temperature. I don't really need to know this info, but it can come in handy if you are in a situation where this matters. You can have your smart fan or infrared-controlled air conditioner kick on if it gets too hot or turn on your smart humidifier if it gets too dry. The sensors are in the USB cable to keep them away from interference or inaccuracies the hub would create. In fact, if there is some sudden change in temperature or humidity, it will alert you with an alarm and or a notification in the app. Also in the app, you can check out a history of your temps and humidity. Along the bottom are two scene buttons. You can assign them to do whatever you want in the app. If you think about it, this hub incorporates all four of these other SwitchBot devices into one. The Hub 2 will connect to your Wi-Fi, supports obviously infrared, and Bluetooth. Nearly anything you can control with infrared, you could control with this thing. They currently support 4,877 manufacturers, 83,934 products, and 21,363 remote control types. I was able to control my old Philips TV with this, though their smart matching feature didn't work for my TV or my Xbox. With all these manufacturers and products, I still had to manually program Hub 2 for both of them. In the end, I did get the same amount of control I got with the actual remote control, which was something I couldn't get to work on the Mini Hub. I could only get the TV to turn on and off with the Mini Hub. The Hub 2 looks pretty good, too. I like the white color, and the display is nice, and will dim when the room gets darker. I haven't had a ton of time to mess with them, but so far they're neat, and add to SwitchBot's already interesting lineup of smart home items. The only potential caveat on this review was I didn't have a newer Google Nest product that supports Matter, so I couldn't test them together. Also, with any IR controller, you might have some mixed results with some devices, with it not controlling them as you'd expect, but I didn't see any of that with my TV and Xbox One. With any remote control you have to manually program, 
I wish you could customize the buttons and have more control over how the buttons are laid out. I'd love to be able to arrange them just like the physical controller is, but it's a small nitpick. Overall, I think these two items are pretty cool. For now, if you want to snatch up either of these, there are links below with codes to save up to 15% until May 10th. Well, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching.